Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dina Atta. I'm working as a petroleum engineer at Khalda Petroleum Company. I'll be your moderator today for the session. I want to welcome all of you and I, welcome, I want to welcome uh, you, Engineer Enrico. Uh, Enrico, sorry. Engineer Hello. Enrico. Hello, Engineer Enrico. He will be our uh, speaker today. Let me introduce him to them, to you. Uh, engineer Enrico Biscaro is an Asia Pacific Drilling Service Director for Baker Hughes. He constantly described as a global leader. He has extensive international operation and product management expertise, uh, he, um, which he leveraged to develop and implement solution for customer in facing of uh, challenging goals. He also works tirelessly to develop talents in the industry. He has a bachelor's degree in geology from the University, University di, Fer di Ferrara a master's degree in petroleum geology from Aberdeen University and MBA from uh, Thumperd School of Global Management. He started his career as a mud logger in 2002 in Algeria and slowly moved through rules. His roles with Baker Hughes, including uh, drilling technical manager in Saudi Arabia and the Kazakhstan Southern, Southern Europe operation manager and advanced uh, drilling system product manager. Across his 80 years of experience, uh, Enrique worked in three continents and 10 countries. Uh, welcome Enrico for our uh, session today and welcome all of our audience. And uh, Enrico, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dina. I hope uh, you can hear me well. So, ciao, because I'm Italian. Salam alaikum, because I work in Saudi uh, for two years also in Dubai and Namaste because in this time, I think Namaste is a greeting that you don't need to touch anybody. So it's very, it's very appropriate. So welcome everybody. Thanks for spending the next hour uh, with me. I'm really honored um, to be here. So the first thing I would like to do is to maybe tell you something about myself. You know, if we, if you, come to somebody that person should present himself so i divided my presentation in three rows on the first one is where i started as a mud logger in the desert like probably some of you have as well the the picture on the top right is uh, my first real team in kazakhstan where i worked for a year and a half uh, the picture in the middle is me now, uh, as you can see, I'm having a wonderful lunch with my colleagues. Uh, one of my colleagues is teaching me something. Uh, lead and care are two core values that I really believe in. And, you know, some fun in the desert there with the sunglasses. This was Abu Dhabi. The last row is a dinosaurs, which was my passion when I was a kid. I thought I would go and dig dinosaur bone and here we are uh, having this discussion not about dinosaurs uh, the next picture is my hometown where i was born malaysia where i live with the kuala lumpur and two picture of nature because i love nature i love to be outside and i love taking pictures so this is me in 12 in 15 pictures uh, it's not many but i hope you get a sense So this, this webinar, this discussion, uh, I would like it to be about leadership. I don't think I have much to teach you in terms of technical stuff. I could tell you how a rotary steel works, uh, how you drill a well, how you drill an horizontal well, but really what is important to me is that I want you to go back from this lecture thinking that you are a leader uh, everyone in this picture in a way is and i believe in the power of leadership to achieve your goal in life whatever they might be so what do leader do uh, leader uh, they are defined as leader because they inspire so I 
probably all of you have seen a picture of these people. So you have Gandhi in India, uh, he's not uh, with us anymore, Bill Gates, you know, the founder of Microsoft, now involved with a lot of, uh, with a lot of um, charities and philanthropic activity. Mother Teresa, again, she devoted her life to others. And Bill Gates, uh, sorry, Steve Jobs. I think Steve Jobs, um, I, I admire him because of his ability to communicate. So to me, these, uh, these four leaders represent a very important things. Two of them, they spend their life acting in service of others. So they dedicated lives to other people. And two leaders are great communicator and they brought change in everybody's life. And so that's, that's why these are my four leader choice. So why leadership is important? Uh, why to me leadership is more important than your, how technical you are or you know, how good you are in petroleum engineering, on drilling engineering, on geoscience, why leadership is important, why we should talk more about leadership. So I'm already behind this chart because the oil now it's at $40. It was at 21 when I prepared this presentation. But really, you know, the message of this slide, if you look at the bottom, uh, you know, you have the chart, uh, which has the year on the X axis and the oil price on the Y axis is divided in two, you know, 30 years before the year 2000. And you have two major oil crises, price crises. And then you have the 20 years after the year 2000, where we had already four crises. And you know the fourth one, the one that we're living now, uh, we really don't know when it will end. Uh, the coronavirus is still rampant in, in many countries. Uh, oil price, as we know, fluctuates, can fluctuate very much. So my message is that if you are in this industry these days, we must forget what was in the previous uh, almost 50 years now. The new reality is that we are dealing with a very volatile environment where we can expect change at every corner. And without leadership, we will not be able to face the challenges. So for projection, and we know these are true, you know, Big companies have cut their capex. BP announced 10,000 layoff, cost reduction, dividend reduction, uh, the, the recommendation to the operators is make sure that whatever cost uh, you take out, it's a long-term transformation. We don't want to see a lot of cost in our organization anymore. Demand obviously is down because of the coronavirus, their travel restriction. I used to, I used to be on a plane uh, two, three times a week. And for the past three months, I never got a plane. So this, this, this is very real, very true. And I know that a lot of you, a lot of us are feeling this pain today. So the industry reacts as usual. Uh, the major asks for a discount and the service company that I also represent say, no, we don't want to give you any discount. We need to keep uh, our profit to deliver good service to you. So I want to show you a major trend, a major uh, a major trend that is happening in the industry that you, if you're not already aware, you should be because that's where the future is. You know, we have a service like probably some of our competitors as well. We call it iTrack and 
this is an important name because I know there's a there's a quiz after, so you need to remember, you know, I track um, that we have deployed in uh, in the North Sea, and basically the rotary steerable system uh, drill itself. There's no need for a directional driller to send a command to the tool and say, go right, go left, go up, or go down. The system does it automatically. We are testing it in, uh, in, in the North Sea. We will have some run in Asia Pacific, and then I'm sure you will start seeing it in your well, in a well near you very soon. This is happening. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, remote operation, these are all things that are happening in the industry. And that's why, once again, we need to unleash the leader within us because the industry will more and more need leaders rather than purely technical uh, people like in the past. So, why you are a leader? Why do I think you are a leader? Because leadership is not about your job, it's not about your job title, it's not about your position, it's not about a rank in your organization. Those of you that can persuade, not only will keep their job or find a job if you're looking for a job, uh, and some of you will probably change the world. I don't know. Uh, there are, you know, there are 550 people. I'm sure that some of you will play a part in changing our world. And you know, really, if you want to be successful in life, whatever is your uh, measure of success, is about making an impact and not making excuses. Excuses, I tell you, in my line of work, uh, it's something I don't get mad very often, but if you make an excuse for yourself, then is when you and I will have a very serious conversation. And really with this talk, um, I want to help you understand and unleash the leader within you. It's very important to me. So how do we do that? Uh, I have six steps that I use whenever I go into a new, a new organization. And I've tested this in the past 18 years. And um, so far, this worked for me and for the people I came in contact with. So I want to have a conversation around these six steps. So from top left to bottom right, I use a picture mostly of my family because I think family is important. Uh, I think it does not matter where you live, where you're from, your religion, your, uh, your sex, your gender, family. I still have not found a person in my travel that says, no, I don't care about my family. So the first important thing is morale. And this is my mom and dad smiling after 50 years of marriage. The second thing is trust. We need to trust each other. Then determination. This is my daughter when she was two and a half years old doing something that it took her an afternoon to get out of the pool for herself, but she did it. And I think that face, that determination is something that we must never forget to have. Change, these are my two grandmothers. They saw a lot of change and that's why I use them. Result, results are super important. And that's me after my MBA and the future. The future is, we don't know, it's uh, random, it's chaotic, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, we cannot control it, but it's beautiful and there's light and uh, the future will be positive if we make it so. So there's two pictures here and unfortunately I don't see you, we cannot interact, but there's a smiling kids on the left and a person that's not smiling on the right. I bet you, Everybody, if I was to ask you which, which person would you like to 
have a chat now, everybody will say the person on the left. And so that's why morale is very important. And how do you achieve morale? How, as a leader, you drive morale? Three things. You need to be accountable without boundaries. You need to trust and you need to communicate exquisitely. Accountability without boundaries. When I say accountability without boundaries, I mean that I don't want to make excuse. Excuses, everybody is a champion to make it. If we could not make the Olympic games for excuses because everybody will win the gold medal. And, you know, we use excuses to say, oh, I didn't do it, but it was not my fault, really. You know, maybe the wind was against me or uh, this happened. And what, why do we use excuses? Because we want to eliminate our fear of failure, right? Yes, we eliminate the fear of failure, but also this freezes us and we cannot really function. So how does a leader can help his team to eliminate excuses? A leader can do this by saying, it is my responsibility. It's my fault. If something goes wrong, it's my fault. Think about this. If you say, oh, Enrico, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't make myself quota. And I tell you, oh, you know, you're horrible at your job. You, you, you cannot do your job. Or I tell you, I should have helped you filling your pipeline so you know that you have always a, 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 a customer where to you can make some revenue or maybe you you give a presentation to me and uh, at the end of the presentation I tell you oh you did an horrible job or maybe I tell you it's my fault if your presentation was not good because I did not make it clear what I wanted to achieve from the presentation so you see, by making me accountable, then I take away your fear of failure. And I also encourage you to learn. I have only one exception, okay? Godzilla. I like movies. And if Godzilla come out of the ocean and hits our rig, then it's not my fault. Respect. So when are people happy? People are happy when our basic needs as human are satisfied. And I'm not talking about, you know, eating or a roof. To be happy, we need to feel that we are respected, right? And I've seen this once again, whether I work in Saudi Arabia, I work in China, I work in the United States, I never found a person that once you give her or him respect, is not happy. Also, without respect, there's no trust. And trust, as you know, is the building block of any business. How do you communicate trust? You use your language. You say it, I trust you, I empower you. You're, you are a leader, people will listen to your word and you need to use, I trust you. I empower you. I respect you. Repeat it. It's important for people to hear this. Communicate exquisitely. Again, what language do you use to make sure that people, uh, people understand uh, and, uh, and follow you? You say, our team, we did it. He or she supported me. I want to thank and you name that person for the contribution. All these things will create trust in your team. And these are only a few examples. Also, to communicate explicitly, it's very important because you persuade with your language. So if you think about morale and how to uh, reinforce it, you need to use you versus I and we versus I. 
you need to tell your team member that you did a great job. We win. We achieve this together. You will see your team always listen to you. And every time I say I, instead of saying we, they will not see you as a good leader. Why did I use now this picture? I use this picture because Domino's Pizza won the trust of the customer in India with a product that certainly is not Indian. Uh, you know, everybody know that pizza is from Italy, but Domino Pizza won the trust of the customer in India. So how do you win the trust of your team? You need to be refreshingly candid. Again, you see communicate exquisitely and you need to be very confident in your why. Exude means very confident, extremely confident. It needs to come out of your pores, right? I'm Italian, so everybody tells me, oh, Enrico, you always talk with your hands, right? And the passion is certainly good. Everybody likes a passionate leader. But if you really want people to listen to you, and if you want people to appreciate your candor, appreciate your, what you say, you need to use data and facts. You also need to be avoiding personal attacks and especially avoid the past. Nobody likes to say, to hear, oh, but you know, five years ago, two years ago, six months ago, or you know, you did not do good, you did not do a good job. I'm sure, I'm sure all of us have been in, in this position and that kills the trust. So if you, use data and facts and you don't attack people and you avoid the past, people will accept your feedback. So how do you communicate exquisitely? How do you communicate very well? You need to be very intimate with your topic. So this is what I do. And that's a suggestion I give you that you can do from tomorrow. When you need to speak with your manager or when you need to speak to your team or when you have to give a presentation or when you speak with your customer, etc., you need to be able to compress your topic in 30 seconds. If you can do that, then you will know that you understand your topic very well. And the first 30 seconds, you will convince your audience that you know what you're doing and then that 30 seconds can expand. But you need to be able to say what you want to say in 30 seconds. What I do, I write it down the first time. Probably the first time it takes me two minutes. And then I, I chip it and I take it away until I can say it in 30 seconds. Try this. This is super empowering. Be two steps ahead. Don't, don't stop at the first question always ask yourself two or three questions, right? Because people like detail, especially in our business. And it's extremely important that you are in the detail. Even if you are a leader, let's say you are a vice president or a president, you still need to know what the person in the workshop on the rig side, etc., does because you can, with a simple word, with a simple 30 seconds, really motivate this person to do better. This is very important to me, your why. And I use the why as uh, Simon Sinek, he, he, he wrote a famous book. Many of you have read it, I'm sure. It's called Start With Why. And, and the why is, the thing that will always keep you centered, the, the lighthouse, the beacon that will, that will show you the way and it will always allow you to act according to your belief. I will, I'm not here to tell you why. And I'm just telling you, don't let anyone to define it for you. 
this needs to be your core, okay? My why is to act in the service of others. I am at your service. And I found in my life that being at service of others is the only way for me to be happy and also to be successful. Oh, this is my favorite quote. I love movies. And uh, I'm sure many, many of you uh, know this quote. And it's no, try not, do or do not. There is no try. And this introduce the concept of beliefs. You need to believe that you can achieve anything. So if you want your team to stop saying, it's impossible, or if you want your team to stop saying, oh, we've done this in the same way for the past 10 years, you need to find something that, some, that, something that people believe it's impossible. You need to communicate passionately. Again, communication, as you see, it's a, it's a, it's a thread across all these points because leader needs to communicate effectively to be successful. And then you need to ask why. Ask why as a child would ask why. So why do you need to find impossible? How many times have you heard from your team member or maybe you said, you know, this is impossible, it cannot be done. So find one, find something that people thought it was impossible and conquer it. And I use this word very, very, uh, I use this particular word because it's important that you conquer the impossible, just like you conquer the Everest or you conquer a record. Because by doing that, you show to everybody that impossible is nothing. Look at Steve Jobs, you know, he invented something that people did not even have in, in their mind. And, you know, the technical challenge that he went through, only he knows. But to communicate the impossible, you again, you need to use we. We can do it. We will achieve it. We will prevail. Usually when you fight the impossible, there will, there will be setbacks, okay? Uh, things will not always go well. At the end of the day, you need to smile, right? The sun will raise tomorrow to the east. And if you don't finish it today, tomorrow is another day. I can assure you, this is very important, right? When the, when the sun sets, if you've not finished your work day, go home, go back to your family, rest, relax, Clear your mind tomorrow, you still have time. Also, what is very important in communication, and this is something that I've never heard when I was younger, is not just the way you speak, but most important for a leader, it's, it's what we call executive presence. So let's go back to the smile, right? To the picture of the little kid I show in one of my first slides. I am sure you still remember that beautiful smile. So try and go in the office every day with that smile. It does not matter which rank, position, job title. People will follow you. And when people follow you, you are a leader. Go in the office every day like this. Mm -hmm. Nobody will follow you. It's difficult, I know. It's not easy. But when you smile, all the psychology, psychiatrists say that when you smile in front of a mirror, you activate the positive aspect of your brain. So smile, walk, shake hands. Okay, no, now you can shake hands really, but you know, have a present. Show that you believe that a team can achieve anything. Because if you show it, people will follow you. Asking why, this is super important. Ask open-ended questions. 
don't ask questions that require a yes or no. Once you get the first answer, continue asking. Why, 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 why? It's annoying. I want you to be annoying. Annoying like kids that is two years old, right? Three years old. They never stop asking. Why they never stop asking? Because they want to learn. And why do they want to learn? Because they know that they have so much to learn. And, and why do they want to learn? Because they want to become adults, right? And why do they want to become adults? Because they want to be a leader one day. They want to do the things that adults do, right? And so please never stop asking because the, the moment a leader stop asking, then nobody will ask questions and the status quo will be accepted. Change. This slide is about change. And you can see, you know, big mobile phones, small mobile phone, big computer, uh, com uh, big computer, small computer, Mario Bros etc change is everywhere and change is faster than ever so as a leader we need to teach something that do not teach in school how do you learn to manage change to embrace change you do this by fostering the curiosity always look for the learning and build resilience So how do you foster curiosity? So whenever you hear is, and I've heard this in every job I went, you know, you're the new leader, the new manager, and you ask a question, why are you doing things like that? And the answer is, oh, we've always done it like this. Then run, figuratively, right? Don't, don't run away, but run because that's when you need to ask start asking questions when things are good is the same what is next what is next is my favorite question by the way just in case there's a there's a question in the quiz you know what is next is my favorite question and why is my favorite question because if you have one success and you say you celebrate the success it's good I like to celebrate, I like to go out, I like to have a nice meal. But then what is next? What are we going to do better the next time? Because there's always space for improvement. And if you don't ask this question, people will continue to do things the way they're done. And when the environment changed, that will not work anymore. And you are back to the first question. We always done it like this, even if it doesn't work anymore you need to raise the bar raise the bar every day be the person that when the team jump a meter you now you now you go and say okay guys let's jump one meter and one centimeter and then one meter and two centimeters and then until you get to two meter three meter four meters that's how you do it this is also one of my favorite look for the learning so, first of all, who is accountable? You are as a leader of your team or as a team member. You are accountable, no one else, okay? Another thing that we always say is that, okay, we win or we lose. So now try, try with your manager, try with your team. We win or we learn. So lose is a bad word, right? Every time we say lose, there's a soccer game, a football game, a baseball game. Uh, you know, the audience is big. I cannot say all the sports, but, you know, lose has got a bad negative connotation. But learning, especially in our industry, especially uh, we love to learn. We love to learn new things. We love to experiment new things. So. By saying learning, you take away a negative and you replace it with a positive. You put your team in a good mindset. And now it's not that important, right? What is important that you learn. Look guys, today I made 10 mistakes, but if I learn from them, 
I'm a better person than you. Of course, please, let's not make the same mistake twice. This is important. So how also you do something that people don't teach you in school, or at least they did not teach me in school. You need to build resilience. Resilience is the resistance, uh, you know, resilience is like a, a, a spring. If you pull it, it will go back to its state, right? So my suggestion to you, and if you don't, if you do it very good, if you don't try, at the end of every week, reflect, what did I do this week? What went well? What went bad? Your brain needs time to adjust things inside it. You know, we are always running, trying to catch up. If you stop during the weekend and reflect on your week, the little things that are all around your brain will go in place. Meditate if you like it. I don't like to meditate. I, I, I go run, right? Or I do sports. Other people like to meditate. It's cool. Find what you like to do. Play video games. Uh, listen to music. Exercise is very important. Exercise is very important because if your body is not healthy, your mind will not be. And read. I love reading, uh, you know, all all the CEO, all the very successful um, people read. And why? Because reading is learning. So you need to continuously learn to build resilience. So unfortunately, this does not work very well. Uh, but if I ask you who this person is, I don't think many people will be able to answer. But if I show you this picture, I am sure that at least 80% of the people will be able to tell me. So this person won the Olympic medal and this person got in the third place. And this to me is the way to say that results are important because we remember only the person who arrived in first place. Nobody remembers. Uh, nobody, nobody remembers the person who arrived there. So how do you make sure that your team really cares about result? How do you foster a winning mindset? How do you focus on what is important and how you put attention to detail? If you do these three things, your team will care about results. You need to be relentless unceasingly intense you can never let go again continue to look for improvement what is next what is next many of you probably saw the michael jordan documentary on netflix that's how he drove result results for him and for his team he was never happy what can i do better how can i improve my shoot how can i do better how can i improve my reservoir how can i drill more efficiently how I can cut costs, how I can improve ROP. Every day, every day, every day, take risks. If you don't take risk, you will never develop a winning mindset because I guarantee you that the person that does not take risk will never raise the bar of that centimeter, which is essential for improvement. You need to focus on what's important. You know. That is your why. Always remember what the priority is. Often, very often I hear, we are not aligned. The team does not know what's really important. And whose fault is that? It's mine. It's my fault if people are not aligned. Why? Because that means that I've not communicated the, the objective properly. So never be afraid to over communicate. You think that people will think you're boring? I tell you, I prefer to be boring than losing the game. And you will lose the game if everyone is not aligned. And more often than not, 
people forget. You're doing 10,000 things every day and you have urgent stuff, the customer calls you, the boss tells you do this. So you need to continuously, continuously refocus on what is important. Attention to detail. Again, who is accountable? I am. It's always me. So if a tool, let's say, uh, probably you're familiar, fails because a technician in the shop forget to put a seal or an O-ring or screw uh, and nuts, it's my fault at the end of the day. I'm responsible in front of the customer because that is my job, right? So then you need to know these things. You need to know how a workshop works, how people work in it. Are they happy? Do they have the right tool? Is the right leadership there? You need to know these details because details are the difference between getting in the first place in the Olympics or getting at the third place. When the competition is so fierce and so close, the details is what makes you different from the others. So I thought I was doing this presentation only for students in Egypt. So obviously, I'm, this slide is heavily skewed toward Egyptian monuments, but I also have the hands of one of the first prehistoric men in the cave. And you know, at the end of the day, men, mankind, always care about leaving a trace. So in Egypt, they build the pyramids, uh, people in cave left their hands on it. In India, they build the Taj Mahal. In Italy, you have the Colosseum. Leaders need to worry about the future, leaving a trace. So how do you do this? You need to build your network. Again, take risk and be at service. How do you build your network? First of all, you need to define your why. Why are you different from everybody else? And being different, it's important because think about a brand. Why do you buy Nike rather than another pair of shoes? Why do you buy Coca-Cola instead of Pepsi? And that is important because, and, and the reason is that this, shoes or beverage or whatever, they differentiate themselves. My suggestion these days is really, if you are not, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool for everyone. Uh, no matter where you are in your career, you just finish university, you start in your career, you're a first time leader, you're a seasoned leader, I believe you should be on LinkedIn because it's where you can build your brand. So a couple of suggestions if you do that. Uh, and again, I don't know how many students are here, how many people have a job or not, but don't try to sell yourself or sell your product uh, immediately. Don't send messages to everyone. Do not rush. Uh, building your brand takes time, and effort, but it's very, very important in this day and age where change is constant, I guarantee you that you will, if you are worried about finding a job or keeping your job, your brand will help you to do both. Take risk. Take risk is important. And there's a phrase in the book I read, says shoot bullets not cannibal so you imagine you want to hit something you're not going to shoot a big cannibal first you're going to shoot small bullet to improve your aim then once you know you have the target in sight you can shoot the cannibal to destroy the target so probably when you shoot a lot of bullet a lot will not hit so fail fast fail often fail soon but don't be afraid of failure. Remember, failure, fear of failure is what makes you create excuse. Fear of failure does not, make, does not make you take risk. 
if you don't fail, you cannot learn. If, if you don't learn, you cannot improve. So don't be afraid of failing. Also trust. One thing I always say and do very often, your leader will trust you more than you trust yourself. I, I had the same. Somebody trusted me. Somebody gave me the occasion. Somebody gave me the job. I did not believe I could do it, but somebody did. So trust yourself. Trust yourself because everyone that is listening to this conversation went to university, has got a great culture, has got a great experience. Trust yourself. You are unique and you can bring something unique to the table. Last but not least, be at service. Your life is not a competition, no matter what they tell you. People that they tell you that life is competition, these are people that want you to fail, right? Life is not a competition. Be kind to others, lift others. The, 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 the small success I had, measured by the ability to travel the world and, and see different places is because I help others achieving their goal. I help our customer, I help my team, I help my leader. I never achieve anything because I help myself. So be at service, be kind, put yourself in other's shoes and magic will happen. I guarantee you that. So in conclusion, the three things I would like you to remember of all that I said uh, is discover your why. Discover why you're doing what you're doing and what is different from the others. If you remember, I use the word communicate exquisitely, communicate passionately, communicate in many of my slides you need to work on your communication. So I'm Italian, right? And English is not my first language. I'm Italian and I move my hands a lot. In America, they don't like that too much. In other place, it's even considered rude. So you need to learn how to communicate with different people, different culture. That this takes a life. I know I will never be done. So if you're not English and you're listening to this conversation, you need to work on your communication every day, every day. And finally, you are a leader. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Leaders are not born, leaders are made. And the way I think you can become a leader is by following the six steps I suggested. I have put here a, a book list because I mentioned book and reading, so this will be shared. But this is really, this was my last slide and thank you very much for listening. Thank you uh, very much for this session. Uh... Enrico, it's very, very uh, informative, but I have some questions from the audience. Perfect. Okay. Um, the first one, what happens when everyone wants to be a leader? What happens is that results will come faster, faster, because if you are a leader, no one will make excuses. And when no one makes excuses, things will happen much faster. Also, in, in a team, in an organization, uh, in, in a world that is always changing, you know, there will always be a day where somebody's got a problem in his family, a problem, you know, maybe a medical problem, and it might not be in a good mood, so if everyone is in the team is a leader, you will lift everybody up. Remember, 
leader is not a position. Leader is not everybody needs to be the president or CEO or, or, the, or the director, but everybody, when everybody's a leader in a team, that team will be successful more than a team where you just have a manager on top and everybody else is just trying to get to the end of the day. So I hope this answers your question. Okay. Um, sec secondly, um, how can I make people believe in my impossible goals if most of them refuse it? It's a super good question. So if most of them refuse them, that is why the first time you need to conquer the impossible. You need to show. Uh, the, the first time probably you will need to come up with the solution to the problem yourself and consequently show everybody that this can be done. If you are in a leadership position, then you need to communicate to your team and ask a lot of questions. Why are you doing this? Can you do it differently? And then there will always be one or two smart people in the room that will say, yes, actually we can. If you are in, let's say you're not in a position with the team, right? Uh, let's say you're a contributor. Then what you need to do is to trust your leader and be a leader yourself and say, yes, we can do this. Let's work together. So either way, uh, to find a solution to an impossible problem, you need to start with believing. The beliefs will drive your action and your action will drive the result. That is super important. Okay. Um, the, a lot of uh, our audience um, are asking about the POC list, about the leadership and so on. And if you uh, could recommend some of them, some of them. Uh, book list? Yes. So, yes, I have a book list here that I, uh, you know, these are, I, I don't know how many, but um, I think these are the books that have inspired me. Uh, I think these are the books that uh, should be in everybody's library. And uh, I guess uh, this can be shared uh, on Facebook or, 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 you know linkedin uh, I, I can share it again on linkedin if you if you uh, follow me and you can go and take it from there okay thank you uh, so much uh, enrico for this um, enrico for this uh, session it's very very enjoyable and very informative i enjoyed it uh, actually personally Annie. So uh, I want to thank all of our audience and thank you so much for uh, your presence today. Thank you.